Many small business owners believe that their idea is a silver bullet to the success of their business. Although it is important that you have a good business idea and solve people's problems, I believe that is not the critical part to make your business successful. Financial planning and more, under, more importantly, financial understanding is where your business will be moved from one level to the next. In today's video, we're going to discuss a budget. What is a budget? How to create your own budget? And some of the benefits of having your own budget. Let's go. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Conrad and this is My Life as an Entrepreneur, a channel where I share my life as an entrepreneur, my journey, what I've learned, to share it with people so that they don't necessarily make the same mistakes as I do or learn from my mistakes. In today's video, we're going to discuss a budget for your business, the importance of it and how to do one. First question, what is a budget? The easiest way to explain what a budget is and the most rudimentary way is it is a future projection of where your business is going to be in a year's time. We take our income, less our expenses and we get our profit. If you have a budget that doesn't project the profit, you've got a much bigger problem than we're discussing in this video and you won't have to do a lot of budgets, that's the good news. But it is taking all of your income, less all of your expenses to show where your business is going to end. We're going to go into each individual item in a lot more detail, but that is the easiest way to explain what a budget is. The first question that's asked is, when do I need to do a budget? Traditionally, your budget runs along with your financial year. So my company's budgets run from the 1st of March to the end of February so that our budget runs concurrently with our financial year. If your financial year has started and it's already passed, don't worry, you can start it at any time. Um, but my suggestion would be is to have your budget run to the end of your financial year. So if it's six or seven months to the end of your financial year, create it then for seven months so that it can run concurrently. And I'll explain why, because it ties in with your accounting that you do monthly. If you are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button down below and the like button. It really does help the channel and it'll make sure that you see all of the new videos that I post. In your budget, there will be two profit lines that you look at. Firstly, we will look at gross profit, which in essence is your sales less the cost to sell that product. And we're going to look at selling a product budget rather than a service budget where you have a fixed cost for a product and hopefully you have a fixed cost for selling the product. To make this a little bit easier, I've got in the description down below, I've got a template of a budget which you can download and use as your own. And we will now switch over to this budget so you can see what, what is happening as I'm explaining it. So here we can see we are in Excel with the budget template that you can find down below. In the top left hand corner, you can put your company name, XYZ Limited. We can say this is for the budget here 2021. And then the first line item, everything that is yellow in the budget line is what you'll fill in. Actual and variance we'll talk to right at the end. But in essence, we're saying sales is what I'm going to sell for the year. This is what I'm projecting to sell. I'm hoping to sell $10 million for the year. That is what I estimate and I, you should have a good idea of what you are hoping to sell in the financial year. Then below that we have cost of sales, which is all the relevant costs you will need to get that $10 million in sales. My subcontractor fees, what my stock will be, packaging materials, storage, labor costs, lock fitting, clothing, tools, anything that you could potentially need to, to get the $10 million in sales. And if you don't have a fixed cost to sell the product, you could work on a percentage. For argument's sake, if we know that the cost of our stock is going to be 60% of what we are going to sell, so we want to work at a 40% stock GP, we could say equal to the stock amount multiplied by 60% and it'll automatically calculate what that would be. 
The other items you will learn as you go along what your cost will be. As I'm said, like I say, if you do this for the first time, it's going to be a lot harder to determine what these need to be. This isn't an exact science the first time, so try and get it as accurate as you can. But if it's not 100% accurate, it will get better as you go along. For argument's sake, we know we're going to have 100,000 in storage costs. I will need $25,000 in clothing I will need I'm going to rent a vehicle for ten thousand dollars and I will have some packaging material to transport my goods for twenty five thousand dollars we now know that our cost to do ten million dollars will be six point one six million dollars and that shows a gross profit of 3.8 million or 38 percent depending on which industry you in that will determine how high your gp will be fast moving consumer goods or products where you have low input costs but high marketing costs which we'll see below the line your gp would tend to go will tend to go up and be higher if you're working on consumer products that that you sell directly to the end user your GP might be higher. You will need to know what your industry is like. Our industry we work to between 35 and 45% depending on what we do. Now we'll quickly look at how to determine your net profit. Your net profit is determined your gross profit less all of your expenses. Your, those expenses are relevant to keeping your business afloat but doesn't have any direct impact on your product cost. So that would be your office, your telephone, your internet, your marketing. Let's quickly look at that and then we can determine what our net profit will be. As you can see now in the expenses part, you have a whole variety of expenses that has no effect on your product cost, but is operational cost that is needed to make sure that your business is functional. I've just filled in some here to show you how it works. Accounting fees, advertising, bank charges, cleaning, courier and postage. Again, you can change this to be relevant to your business. You literally just type in there whatever you need. And some of these will be a guess. You will not necessarily know how much petrol you, you, you'll use in a year. However, your rent paid and your salary should be pretty fixed costs. I know I'm going to have so many employees. This is each employee's cost. In here, we can also add on six months into the year. I'm looking to add two more salespeople and I know their cost is why. You can then add that in and know what your salaries will be for the year. Once you've populated all of your expenses, you will see your total expenses at the top. And then right at the bottom, it takes your gross profit less your expenses and you get a net profit before tax you can then add in your tax and your dividends but it's not necessary at this stage and you'll see what your net profit or potential loss will be again don't create a budget for a loss but this gives you a good idea of where you will end the year if your net profit is too low you know your expenses are too high the way to solve that is one of two reasons. Either you need to up your sales or you need to reduce your expenses. Those fancy cars, the fancy offices, although they are nice, they're not necessarily needed. And this will give you a very good overview of your business. And we will talk about the advantages shortly, but this will show you where your business will be in a year's time if you follow these. To end of this video, we're going to talk about some of the advantages. The first advantage, it sounds a little bit silly, but it's true, is you've got something to aim at. You've got a target. Now that you know what you need to get to, you know what the end result is going to be. Not only for your sales, but also for your expenses. Because you know you have something to aim to, it is easier to stick to. The second advantage is you can take your budget divided by 12 for each month of the year and have that actually plugged into your accounting software. I know this is possible with Sage and it is possible with Pastel. I'm not an accountant, never claim to be one, but you can ask your accounting staff to plug in your budget into your accounting software. This gives you the ability to track your, your sales as well as your expenses in real time. So when you do your monthly management reports, you have the ability to see where you are in relation to your budget 
am I ahead of target? Am I behind target? And if I haven't spent as much money as I, I plan to, is it a good thing? Because sometimes it can be a bad thing. You could have spent less on marketing and advertising and you don't actually reach your sales goals. So this is an ability to track your expenses and your income in real time so that you don't wait a whole year. So often we as entrepreneurs, we set goals and 12 months later, we evaluate where we are. This gives you the ability to every month track where you are at and where the business is going. The third point of one of the advantages is when you do your management meetings, if you have shareholders, you have the ability to show them where you are at and if you are tracking en route and if you're looking to raise money during a financial year, you can use these figures as a valuation point. So you don't necessarily have to wait for a full financial year to revalue your company. If you are on target, you could use these numbers and your budgets to show investors or potential investors where you are going and what your business is valued. <laughs> Lastly, this is a great tool to scale. You now have a great foundation which your business is built on sound financial principles on, on expenses and also on income so that should you scale the business, it is a really good foundation that you don't only start worrying about expenses when you, when you start scaling. Because your financial principles is sound and your budget is sound, you have the ability to scale bigger and use that same principles to start growing your business. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It's scientifically proven that hitting the like button really helps you with your accounting. It's not true. Um, but please hit the like button, please subscribe. If you found some value in this video, please let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what videos you'd also like some, some input on. Please share this video. And once again, thank you so much for, for watching and we'll see you in the next one.